Why did it have to be Apple? We're never going to hear the end of this, are we? In its time as a tech company, Apple has done a lot of cool things. They've also done a lot of cooler versions of existing things. And in fact, I'd say that they are among the best when it comes to innovating, especially when it comes to the more nuanced features or experiences that we have with our devices. But they are also the best at doing some absolutely whack things and then masking it as being something cool. Like, you all remember the courage it took them to remove the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, right? Well, the reason to move on really comes down to one word, courage. And then when you couple that with a diehard fan base, well, you get the idea. Which is why I'm not someone who doesn't like it when Apple does cool things. Rather, I'm someone who will dread the often over-enthusiastic fan response that typically follows. But I'm also not the type of person who won't give credit where it's due. And that's what this video is about. So let's do it. Let's talk about one of the most interesting new features of the iPhone 14 Pro. When I first saw images of the iPhone 14 Pro's new notch, I was shocked because it looked even more obtrusive than the existing notch. You know, I was so ready to just laugh at Apple's pathetic attempt and then my jaw hit the floor. Somehow, Apple has pulled the freaking Uno reverse card on my ass and turned their awful eyesore in the middle of the screen into a feature. Huh? How? Now, obviously, when Apple launches some cool new feature, they have to give it a ridiculous name. And in this case, well... We're calling it the Dynamic Island. Seriously, I, I couldn't even have come up with a more douchey name, even if I tried. Like, even if I sat here and thought about it, like, like what would I call it? Uh, adaptive Notch? I can't, I, I can't do it. I just don't have enough Starbucks in my veins, you know? Not enough oat milk lattes with a caramel drizzle. Ugh. But what I hate more than even the name is just how well it seems to work, you know? Like, how have Apple done this? How have they turned this massive eyesore in the middle of their screen into a feature that I now must absolutely have? Just look at how it looks almost alive as it morphs into different shapes and sizes depending on what you're doing with it. You know, it will expand if you have music playing in the background or if you change alert modes or if you plug in a charger. And also, the way it sort of like pushes the other elements in your notification shade to the side just to make way for the extra space. <laughs> You can even interact with it by tapping on it and then, you know, the way it sort of like comes out and then it subtly blurs the background while adding a little bit of shade. Oh, so cool. Currently, it looks like it supports a bunch of Apple's native apps as well as a handful of third-party applications, but Apple has said that they will be opening this up to more third-party app developers, so we, will be, we should be getting more apps soon lah. One thing that I've always found annoying about using the iPhone is its lack of multitasking support. Like, for example, it doesn't have split-screen view, and I've always found it very troublesome when you want to quickly switch between multiple apps. You know, there's like no easy way to do it. But with the Dynamic Island, it looks like you're getting at least a little bit of uh, quick app switching uh, thanks to this new feature. When more than one app occupies the island, you know, it will sort of split off from the main island and then you can quickly tap on them to switch between the active apps. Now, obviously, I'm not 100% sure how well this works in the real world because, you know, I haven't tried it, but it looks like a step in the right direction for making the pro iPhone more usable for pro users. Now, don't confuse my excitement though. I would like to point out a couple of potential issues that I've already that I'm already seeing with this new feature. So, for example, you know, how long will it take for actual useful third-party apps to make use of the Dynamic Island, you know, third-party apps for Malaysians especially, right? You know, I'm talking about apps like Grab, Maybank, Google Maps, Waze, um, stuff like that. Like when will that come? I don't have a timeline for that, so we don't know how long before we'll be able to have 
these proper dynamic island experiences. Then there's also the question of how interacting with this dynamic island would feel if you have like a tempered glass screen protector on it, right? Obviously, it's gonna have a cutout at the top for the camera module, and then there's gonna have ridges, and then you know it's gonna be annoying when you wanna touch it. Like, will that affect its responsiveness? Will that affect its sensitivity? I don't know yet. And finally, let's not mistake me liking what Apple has done here to me also thinking that this is no longer like a super obtrusive screen element because it still is and if like I said at the beginning of this video I think it's even more in the way than the existing notch I mean have you seen what watching full uh, full width videos look like on this iPhone even Apple couldn't hide how bad it looked but above all, I hate how much I am actually liking this whole dynamic island feature. I even hate saying the name. But you know, I just have to give props when this is just really smart UI design. You know, the Roman Mars in me appreciates smart UI design and this is it. After all, we have seen what happened when Android tried to hide their notch. And well, yeah. But yeah, that's what I think about the new Dynamic Island. I think that's probably the most interesting feature for me on the iPhone uh, because all the others require a little bit more testing like the camera and the performance. Uh, but let me know what you think of the new iPhone 14 Pro series. Uh, you know, what's your favorite feature? What do you think about it? What do you think of the price and would you buy it? Uh, if you want to know how much the phone costs or more details on the device, I'll leave the links in the video description. So make sure you check that out. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also on all the other social media platforms, but our home on the internet will be at surgeonchart.com. So until the next video, I'll see you then. Bye. Hello, Zamira. What's your, what's your Starbucks order? Um, it's a oat milk latte with a hint of caramel drizzle. Okay, thank you. Bye. Well, hey, wait.